Now that we have all the background of analyzing the current situation the past year, we know a lot about this benchmark and we know a lot about this answer for this question, where are we today? So you know now how to gather information, how to analyze it and present it very simply and short, in a short manner to tell us really who you are as a business, what have you done, who were your competitors, in what markets were you playing in, but it's all past tense. We want to move to the future tense. And the next question, if you remember, when we spoke overall, the marketing plan, we said that the next thing to go for is strategy, what we called more clearly marketing objectives, answering a very simple question, where are we going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow, next year. A year back, a year upcoming. Looking at that, we want to clarify how easy it is, how simple it is now that we have all this background, this benchmark. How is it possible so quickly to translate your findings, your research, your current situation, the things that you have analyzed so far, how is it easy, so easy to translate that into objectives? We have the past year analysis which we have conducted. And if you haven't gone through these issues, you can do that before we advance. And later we will see how to take each element and to translate it into an objective. So once we have these objectives finished, we will have the first part of the marketing plan ready, which is where are we today on the left part, this is answering here, the left part. And then secondly, we have the answer to the question, where would we like to be tomorrow, which means next year. So let's start with the first three elements that we have seen before. We've spoken about, if you remember, the business environment, PESTO analysis. We spoke about market analysis in different formats. We spoke about competitive analysis, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. And now we want to speak about a model which will easily clarify this very bizarre title, marketing strategy. How is this related to strategy? How is this related to marketing strategy? We're going to see through a model. A model which is important and, and a model which we'll speak about in the next few minutes just to talk about strategy. And again, strategy is not a very simple term. Strategy is a confusing term, and we'll use this matrix in order to see exactly what marketing strategy can be. It is not everything about strategy, it is not everything about marketing strategy, but it definitely clarifies the issue of these first three analyses. How can we translate that into an objective? So let's look at what Igor Ansov, that goes by his name, Ansof, how can we think about what to do today and what to do now we're looking at the next year? Every business starts with an existing product or products with existing markets. When we say markets, we really mean target audiences, people who are in the market, and if you wish even simpler, this is the offer and this is the demand. Offer and demand is all about marketing. Whenever they meet, we create a market. So pro let's say just as an example, we have again a small restaurant. We have 10 dishes, 10 products, 10 dishes for this small restaurant. And during the first six months, we have, let's say, 200 loyal customers, which is not bad, as we've seen loyal consumers. What we're doing here is taking the 200 loyal consumers and selling to them as much as we can existing menus, existing dishes. These are 10 dishes within our menu. These are two loyal customers, consumers. We want to sell as many times as we can the same dishes to the same people. And this is called penetration strategy. This is the S word, which I really don't like. That's why I'll write only S, strategy. Penetration strategy means 
which means a lot to do with direct marketing. It has a lot to do with persuading the same people to come again and again and again. To develop the loyalty pyramid. Speaking about segmentation, we mentioned this pyramid. You can look it back. You can go through and revise. So this is all about what we can call more of the same. You can have a business, have a good menu with 10 dishes, have 200 loyal consumers, which is really not bad, and run your business forever. But if you're more wise, you have the options to think sideways and to think, what other options do I have? One option might say, might suggest, <clears throat> let's take the 200 people, which are very loyal to us, they know us very well, and let's try to develop a new menu, new dishes. Let's say instead of 10 dishes, we'll have 15 dishes. So these 200 people will be even more loyal. They'll come again and again to see us. And we might succeed, and we can call this product development strategy. Again, the S for strategy. Product development strategy. On the other hand, we have another temptation to take the 10 good dishes we have. We have a very good menu, set menu, very clear. Let's try to develop the markets, develop, which means bring more people, bring, or bring more loyalty levels, retain the existing ones, promote the restaurant to new customers. And this would be called, as you can imagine by now, product is here, market is here, then we can call it market development, developing strategy. Now, in theory, you can do both, of course. But you can't do them in the same dosage, with the same priorities, with the same budgets. You always have to prioritize. And marketing, as you figured by now, is a lot about prioritization. I have a set budget, I have a set time, I have set, set, set resources, set resources I have. Again, knowledge, employees. I have to see where do I invest my money. Is it new people or is it new products and services to the existing customer base? Let's take this as an illustration <clears throat> talking about this year. 